Keisha Bisram, and you're listening to the Every Shade Podcast. Jeanette Delone is a native New Yorker, born and raised in Upper Manhattan. Though Jeanette's first passion was classical ballet, she fell in love with acting during her college years at Columbia University, where she double majored in theater and psychology. Since then, her acting work has spanned television, film, theater, commercials, and new media. Currently, Jeanette is expressing her passion for other aspects of the filmmaking process. She made her directorial debut with the short film Return, which she also wrote, produced, and starred in. In this episode, we chat about her second short film, Riso. The short film is about an Afro-Latina struggling with her identity as she navigates the Hollywood machine. Thank you so much for joining um, my uh, my podcast. I, I, I'm really grateful that like you said yes to this interview because... Uh, I was actually looking for more artists and, um, you know, I know some people who are like in different countries experiencing the coronavirus and like, you know, not feeling well and so on and so forth. And Frank mentioned you and I was like, oh my God, like I didn't even, I didn't even think about you. And it was a great, great suggestion on his part because I, I watched Teresa and like, I, um, I saw it during the, uh, one of the film festivals online and, um, He's talked about it um, many times, but like, I guess when you hear, you know, when someone's talking about a project that they're working on, I don't, you know, you're not experiencing it, right? Right. <laughs> and when I watched it, like, girl, I cried so much afterwards. It, it really, really touched me on so many levels. Um, and I was really happy that you actually you know, move forward with the story and that you produced it because this is something that I think a lot of uh, women and women of color go through. And I talk about it often, but I don't think a lot of people understand or can get or grasp the emotional, like, Mm. (laughs) of it, you know? So I think watching it, it was really interesting. Um, the way it was conducted and I yeah it, it just it, it touched me on so many levels and you know I don't even know you and I was like man I'm so proud of her for for doing this because this is something that needs to be you know shown um, yeah thank you yeah so um I, I guess like so I, I don't really do introductions here because I do it before beforehand uh, okay okay yeah yeah so we're just gonna dive into the questioning part. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I guess the first thing I want to ask you is um why? Why Riso? Like where why did you feel compelled to tell a story and like why where did the story come from? Like why did it come to be? So oh, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh I'm trying to say this very succinctly because it's like a lot there was a lot going on. hmm So Basically, someone called me, a fellow Latinx person, and suggested that I, well, okay, I'm going to say this very succinctly because it's not exactly what happened, but they sort of suggested that I write a story about being Afro-Latina, you know, in Hollywood, like in, you know, at auditions and about discrimination and, uh, it's hard because it's very convoluted so I'm trying to sum it up but basically basically I said yes to writing it um I I was not expecting to produce and direct it it was just sort of like you know the person um is a producer and director so the the idea was that they would they would tell the story but I just felt like it would be it would be more it would be responsible of me to write it because it's something I've actually experienced and to not, you know, give that power to someone who maybe isn't an Afro-Latina actress and, you know, have, have them just imagine what it's like, which that's great. But what it's actually like is so subtle and so specific that you kind of have to go through it to understand it, like you said. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like, yeah, I don't know, maybe this is a little silly to describe it that way, but I felt like this is my civic duty to, like, to be, you know, to be the person that writes this. So that's kind of how I started just writing the script. Got it, got it. 
so I mean this is something that you've experienced like specifically yes um so it's something that I know very well and it's yeah like it, it is hard to describe exactly because I think what what people who don't experience this don't like don't understand that most of the time the racism isn't blatant especially like in a liberal place like New York or LA like people aren't going you're not going to get the part because you're black like no one's doing that necessarily it is much more subtle so that's something that I, I wanted to capture yeah I think um am I am I I know the I know the film is in film festivals right now so am I allowed to like talk about certain scenes um Depends. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just, I mean, maybe don't give away the ending. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I won't give away the ending. I, I, think, I think what uh, I just want to make like an observation is that, um, in my opinion, what you've captured so perfectly and what you captured best was the audition rooms. Mm. Um, both times, I think, like uh, what you said, like how how subtle, um, you know, the racism is, or the prejudices, or or um you know, it's so subtle the way that it was done because the actress was experiencing it, but there was, no one was saying blatantly that, you know, that no one's paying attention to her performance or, <laughs> you know, right. why, why she should straighten her hair, you know, it was just um, that passive aggression that you, that, that was done. It was, it was done so well. Um, Thank you. And you capture that so well. And I, I guess, like, what I want to ask you, I know I gave you a list of questions, but I kind of jump around here. Um, uh, the actors were so incredible with how yeah. they portrayed the story. And it's a very, um, it's a very triggering, uh, you know, performance, too, especially, like, what they're going through. Um, is this, this is not your first time directing, correct? It's my second time. Your second time. Okay. What was your experience directing this piece? I mean, it's it's your experience that you've had gone through and yet you're directing at the same time. Can you talk more about your experience with that? Um I am I would say and this is very generalized because it's not true. I think we're all emotional beings. Mm-hmm. But I would say I was not triggered during the process. It was a very, just a positive experience because it was just, you know, a ragtag team, like getting together to tell a beautiful story. So I was just more excited about that. And, um, and being the producer and director and like, you know, I had a lot of hats, like I was the art director. (laughs) (laughs) I was the costume designer. There was just so many moving pieces that I wanted. I just, I wanted to just get it done and I wanted to tell the story and tell the story well. So um, even though a lot of it was based on my life and I, and I suppose it's a bit sad, (laughs) um, I was just so excited to be making the film. And it was also really validating just the the sheer amount of people who, who were excited to work on it. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I said, no one's going to get rich and no one's going to get famous from, you know, generally speaking from a from a short film so it was just like it was so enriching to to have like a group of artists come together and be like yeah we we want to help you tell the story yeah yeah I mean what you mentioned about like you know it's it's not about the wealth part part of it it's such a I mean the, the, the story itself is so rich you know um I can imagine that like people are just so passionate about telling it um yeah I love that Did, did you, I mean, so since you said it's like a, a ragtag team, like how, what was it challenging to to produce this film since it was kind of done on a, on a smaller budget, I'm assuming, or? I think producing is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I could answer that question saying, oh yeah, no, it was easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is like really hard, like yeah. really taxing. So yeah, it was hard. And and of course not having, I mean, if I had 50 grand to do this, I would have, it would have been easier because I would have just hired producers, hired production managers, hired an art department, a whole department. 
um, I would have, there would have been like teams, you know, working on each individual aspect. Um, it wasn't too shabby. It's not like I did this with like three people in my living room. We did yeah. have, you know, you know, we had all the basics down. Um, but yeah, of course, like if I had, you know, if I put in a lot of money, I would have just hired a producer to do it for me. <laughs> I, th I think that goes for like most of us, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the reason why I'm asking this question is because, um, so I, I produce a web series myself and like, I, I get a lot of uh, responses of people who are like, yeah, like I want to write this and I want to, you know, shoot this or I've had responses of people wanting to collaborate with me to create something. I'm just like, guys, it's not, it's not as easy as it sounds. And also, right. also, I think what drives, I mean, I, I'm sure you can agree with this on me too. It's like, I think what drives, um, you know, uh, the passion to like actually produce something on your own and wear so many hats is to make sure that you have like a compelling story to tell. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's like, I, it's something that I like, I like to talk about with, you know, with um, people who produce their own work because uh, it's interesting to hear their side of the story of like how they juggled trying to tell such a deeply rich story <laughs> while wearing so many hats. As you said, you were an art director as well. Um, how, many days, how many days did you shoot this, by the way? It was like uh, a couple of days, right? Um, it was like four and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you face anything like challenging while producing it? Uh, I mean, the whole <laughs> <laughs> well, producing like for producing from beginning to end is just really challenging. There's, it's, yeah. it is just, it's like a monster to me. It's like what I imagine planning a wedding would be like, like a, <laughs> like a big yeah. wedding and that stress. Yeah. Um, because like you have one shot. Like, yeah. you know, with the wedding, it's like you have that night or the, the, those two days and it has to work. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like this. It's like there's money going into it. There's people's time, people's energy. There's there's partly your reputation. Right, right. So it, it had all the pieces have to come together. And so uh, that's, that's really challenging um, from the beginning, which is like finding the money, then finding the right people to work with you um the schedule just making sure that we can finish it that's a really scary thought being like oh my god you know the idea of like we couldn't finish it yeah um so yeah all, all parts of it are are really difficult i hope that doesn't sound discouraging <laughs> no 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 oh my god no, not, not at all <laughs> like i hope someone's not like was it like about to produce something and then they hear this and they're like oh never mind <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah well I guess like I I could I could count the question of like I mean what 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 did you after producing this and after like creating this like what okay, maybe this is not the best question to ask them I guess like <laughs> producing it you know like what was what were the best moments that you had on set oh um I had to, oh my gosh I love working with actors and this is more of a, a director thing though but um I just loved I loved the crew and the actors putting their spin on things and because I generally hired good talented people <laughs> <laughs> um they brought their own flair while still being true to the story in my direction that it was just so nice to see like it's so nice to see like good actors mm. like, refreshing it just just seeing and specifically as a producer seeing the things that you've been planning out and I think that's why people say this but this is like true for weddings too seeing the thing you've been planning out for months start the wheels start turning um, it's really cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, seeing the pieces come together, you know, you, you kind of go a little crazy before you're like, okay, well, this person needs to do this and then I need to pick up this, but can this person help me pick up that? So that at that time I can do this because when we get to day four, this might be an issue, but mm -hmm. my backup plan is this. And then, so I need to talk to that person about the backup plan and then do this. And then to see you kind of go a little bit hands off um once we start you know rolling it's really cool to see the pieces kind of like 
I don't know, it's just almost like a, a, a clock or a watch. You know, mm-hmm. it starts like moving on its own, which is really cool to just see. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk more about like your relationship with the actors? Because I, you're a lead actress. Um, oh, she's so good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she, she just carried the story so well. Mm. And there's something interesting. And I, I you know, it's interesting to me because sometimes like I think I think good acting not only comes from the actor itself but with the relationship with the director mm. and um, her internalizing everything that's going around her um, you know it was really powerful to watch because I and I don't know if I felt this because I'm a woman of color or because I'm just I'm just part of the audience and I don't know if other people felt this too but really feeling everything that she's going through in the moment and just being so um, I don't know, I j- just so transfixed by her performance. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just want to know like what your relationship w- was with her um, performing this piece, especially if this was like, a, you know, um, this is something that you've experienced. I'm sure this is something that she experienced as well in her, in right. her life as well. Um, so specifically uh, how we work together or, you know, how I found her, how yeah, I cast how her. Did you, did you guys know each other before? Or did, is- so for the, I would say 75%, of, actually 80% maybe of, of the cast I knew mm-hmm. in some way, shape or form. And I, I think only, no, there was a, there was a few that I auditioned. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was one of the people I auditioned. Oh, okay. So, she, so you, you hadn't met her before. I had never met her. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was lucky that she auditioned. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was really lucky. Uh, yeah, but it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's, because the thing is like the most experience I have in filmmaking is acting because I've, you know, I know people start when they're five, but like I've been doing it for a while, I would say like 12 years. So, um, and it's something I've taken seriously, pretty seriously. So I think that's my strength as a director. Mm-hmm. I have to go with my strengths. Um, so I was like, my strength is going to be in, in finding the actors and the acting. Like, mm-hmm. that's, what I, that's what I know. Um, so and that was also the funnest part, like casting it. But um, yeah, I with her specifically, I... In my first film, I went through a, through a casting director. This time, because I was only casting a couple of the parts, and I had most the rest of it pretty much cast already, I just put up something on Actors Access. Um, mm. You know, it's a casting website for people who don't know. And I was just like, well, let's just see what happens. Who knows? And it was all self-tapes that I was accepting. And I just had a backup plan. I was like, okay, if I can't find anyone, maybe I'll hire a casting director um, to you know help me find people. But um, she just auditioned. And it's one of those things as an actor, you know, you hear people say, oh, yeah, like, or directors say, oh, yeah, the second this person walked in the room, I knew it was, I knew they got the part, which mm-hmm. I felt like I hated that as an actor. Because I'm like, but wait, I like really worked on this. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> but I think, <laughs> like, what do you mean people are just going to judge me like the, the second I open my mouth and be like, no, or yes. But that is what happened. I was just like, yes. Yeah. Like, yes. Like, yeah. that's, she's the part and that's, that's her. Um, and what I learned is that it's, it, it's a combination of her being really right for the part and being a good actor. And, and the energy that she brings, which is a very relaxed energy, a very focused energy, um, a very grounded and centered energy that you can, I could tell very early into watching herself tape. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, that word grounded. I think that's what, what it was with her. Mm-hmm. She's very, very grounded energy. Um, I, I, uh, <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that because, um, yeah, I've, I've been through that experience of having to cast, uh, for my show and I, I I I hated hearing oh my god as soon as like they walk in you know and right. experience that too I did experience that as well <laughs> right oh like this is this is it um but I I actually interviewed a director recently and um he told me that eighty percent of directing is casting hmm. and um which I I can understand how truth truthful that is because you're mm-hmm. saying it as well like you know you 
you did your best to hire really good talent and things kind of happen seamlessly on set mm-hmm. which is which is interesting is that something that you've kind of learned like in your in your past production um it's the thing that gave me the confidence to one of the things that gave me the confidence to di- start directing because <sighs> Okay, so I'm not gonna try to get. I don't want to be shady, but there is there is a bit of a broy culture when it comes to like Girl, filmmaking. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to call out any names and talk about any specific people of my past, but um, it's very broy, and there is a very a little bit of a snobby vibe sometimes mm. from from um, people really into filmmaking. Uh, yeah. There is also like a tech heavy side, um, which I was sort of lacking on because lacking in because, you know, I I came from an acting background. So Mm -hmm. not knowing a ton about, um, you know, uh, cameras and lenses and, um, you know, just cinematography and lighting. And not that I didn't know a lot, but I, I mean, not that I didn't know anything. I definitely did my best to try to fill the gap there but that's absolutely not my expertise and so it is a little intimidating to see some directors like who know so much or like so technically savvy that if the cinematographer like (laughs) okay I don't mean this but if the cinematographer dropped that they could pick up the camera and do it themselves (laughs) I'm not that kind of director but it was really encouraging you know when you always hear that that high percentage sometimes like 80 some people say that's 95 but like the, the biggest part of directing is is casting. So I'm like, oh, I know I can do that, and I can do that really well. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I've been in that room so much, and I've seen, you know, because of my acting background. So that definitely made me be like, well, if that's most of it, then I got it. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm I'm so happy that you mentioned that because I I've I've interviewed a few women who are getting um who are act like they're actresses um a few aren't but uh they're getting into I guess the side of honing on other skill sets that they have when it comes to I don't want to say just production because they're not all tech savvy um some are while some aren't and um there really is this like power of I guess a woman kind of coming in and really driving a story and telling a story something different happens you know Mm -hmm. Um, which I admire so much. Um, but yeah, I guess I want to get back to uh, the story of Riso. So I know you, uh, you've you mentioned that, uh, you know, this is a story that, that you want to tell and like, especially uh, with your experience. For people of color who are watching it can get the obvious of what's mm-hmm. going on. For your overall audience, is there a message that you want people to get specifically? Or, or does, it d- just, does it depend on like, you know, what they experience, like, is there something that you want them to, to get while watching this, or after watching it? Well, one thing that, that I really just wanted to portray, Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I think when I write things, I don't focus as much on, like, what do I think people, I, I don't focus so much on, on the, the audience, because it can get you a little bit too, I don't know, manipulative, (laughs) I don't know how to describe it, um, I just write the story that I feel is compelling, but what I find compelling about these situations, it's a little bit hard to understand from an outsider point of view, um, is what that does to your psyche. Uh, what subtle racism does to your self-esteem. It's hard to, if you just say it to someone who's never experienced it, they can kind of intellectually understand it, but to show it is, is completely different. Um, and you know, the, the idea of like microaggression, Mm -hmm. uh, really portraying that in an honest way and having you experience through the, the lead actresses, the lead characters eyes. Um, and so she's, you know, and her kind of carry you through what it feels like. I know that I think there's something disarming about that for anybody who, who hasn't experienced that, but I think it's relatable to almost anyone watching it, because even if you, the issue isn't necessarily racism, even if you are a white man, I'm sure you've experienced some kind of subtle aggression mm-hmm. and like the way it makes you feel or someone being passive aggressive towards you, 
um, in a way that has consequences that you might not get that job or, you know, you might not become friends with someone who's assumed something about you. So in like in a very general sense, I think we can all kind of relate to it, but I think it's when it leads, when it's really just about the color of your skin and nothing else, I think it's, it's a, it, it's, it, that's very devastating. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you can really do to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, <laughs> I noticed that you, um, you, you studied in psychology, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Does that play a factor into your writing? Cause I feel like it kind of, it, it kind of does. Cause I feel like, well, actually, no, you can answer before. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it, not because I learned, not because, not because like I'm using my psychology degree. It's just something I've always, I've always been interested in like the psyche and like why people do the things they do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also, as an actor, I've, I've had to really work on empathy. So one thing I, I do is I, I like to put myself in the audience's shoes and mm-hmm. I think I do that pretty well. And uh, I just think like, oh, great. So they're going to see this. And what are their assumptions? They're going to think this, or they're going to think the story ends this way, or they're going to kind of roll their eyes in this moment. So I'm going to disarm them in this next scene. So I I really like doing that. I like to think a little bit about the way that people think. Um, And also the subject matters, I think, are very based on so so pretensions the inner workings of man <laughs> <laughs> that makes any sense yeah no it does, it does. <laughs> i mean the reason why i mentioned that is because um when i when i saw that in your bio i i was like oh that like that's interesting because um i feel like sometimes uh you know and i i think like you know as as a creative you know when you watch something you are kind of judging it from a certain point of view and um Sometimes, like, I don't, I think, I think good writing is, is when things aren't as expository as, because right. you know, sometimes you see that often. All the time, yeah. And um, for me, that's so distracting, um, you know, when someone is blatantly saying, like, oh, you don't like me because of this, or you, right, right, right. I, I, for this reason, and it's like, oh, that just took me out. And I, I think interesting about, like, Riso is that none of that happens. Yeah, I was aware of that. You know, um, you know I did. <laughs> that was that was the reason I started writing it. This is before I thought I was going to direct or even ever produce it. I was like, it's my duty to not make this eye rolling. Because mm-hmm. if someone wrote it who didn't experience it, they might do a lot of explaining. They might. <sighs> exaggerate it or make it very obvious and they might focus on the lead character being victimized and the and the lead character just having bad things happen to her and I want to focus more on her perspective and what it feels like and and I also kind of you know wrote the story from the eyes of an Afro-Latino who isn't super aware of of racism mm-hmm she's sort of going through life very innocently. And I think that was really important um, to kind of grab you, whatever side of the, the, I guess, socio-political viewpoint you are, you know, you can follow her and be like, oh, she's just working hard to do the thing she wants to do. Okay, Mm -hmm. like, let's see what happens. And to see her innocence sort of be disrupted, I think is a, is a it's a good way to tell that story um because in in a in a way she's sort of mimicking our own innocence either either when we're young or the innocence we have we haven't experienced something like this yeah yeah because i think um i think like uh for me I'm, i'm i'm very involved in learning more about stories that are being told by people of color for people of color and you know surrounding that that theme but it it, I just I get so (laughs) I guess I I'm not all about you know the over explaining of what's going Mm -hmm. on because to me I think that's like that falls into the trap of victimizing yes and I love that this character of Riso was not necessarily 
a victim mm-hmm. um like she she you know i i didn't really i didn't really see that so much like somewhere right. it, is, it is there you know but i didn't yeah. really see that you know and i think that's what made it really interesting and more compelling because you know she wasn't victimizing herself or, mm-hmm. or you know she wasn't like beating down like the system or anything like that right. you know she just keeps going and she's like you know, it's a little bit more heartbreaking, I think, in my opinion. And she's just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, shoot for my dreams. And, like, she gets shot down once. And it's like, I'm gonna go for it again. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm gonna keep doing it. And it's very, yeah, it's it's not putting her as much in that stereotypical victim role. Um, It's heartbreaking, but it's also not at the same time. Because I thought, what were you gonna say? No, yeah, I was interrupting you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was going to say, like, it it wasn't at the same time because um, I I feel like, to me, I feel like, you know, I I know that there's a lot of this going on right now, but like people talking about, you know, some racism and microaggression and, you know, in different industries from all across the board. It's not just the filmmaking industry at all. It's everywhere. Yeah. And I think, in my opinion, you know, the only way to really beat the system is to be positive and to try, try, try again. Mm-hmm. And to see her do that kind of, it, it made me like root for her so much, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, you know, obviously I'm not going to talk about the ending at all, but I guess seeing, you know, the positive choice that she made kind of made her, I guess it put her in a better position. Yeah. You know, and I, I just, I, I really loved that. Um, I don't want to talk more about that because I, <laughs> I don't want to write too much about it. But, um, yeah, I guess, I guess the last question I want to ask you is after producing this film, I mean, is there something that you got out of it that you weren't expecting or something that you've learned um, that you weren't expecting at all? Something that I've learned. I learned so much. <sighs> So it's kind of hard. I'm trying to think of like a big takeaway. Um, if there's multiple, there's multiple, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so many. Yeah. I mean, from the writing aspect of it, the importance of structure. Um, I didn't have as much structure in my first short, which it was still, I thought it was still good. But it was just that really, you know, I feel like Riso really had a beginning, a middle and an end. Mm-hmm. And I think that's hard to do with a short film because you're so limited on time. Uh, and for a while, when I wrote it, it just had a beginning and a middle. Mm-hmm. And I got feedback like, but there's no ending. And I was like, yeah, but it's a short film. It's like, it's like artistic that way. Like you don't know what happens. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, am I, is that, do I really mean that? Or do I just not want to write an ending because it's hard? <laughs> um, <laughs> So I'm really glad I did that. I just find like learning the importance of, of structure. And, um, and I, you know, I think it really came through. And um, I think just as a producer, whoo. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 what I learned in the first film and it was solidified in this film, man, it's like, not necessarily just as a producer, but any kind of artist, you gotta, you gotta work at your own standard and and this is not and like I love my crew so I'm not I'm not this is not about people in my crew but I think people in like in my life and in general Mm -hmm. when you work at a high standard people do try to bring it down yes a lot and it's very often like I wrote and I think I probably wrote more I can't quite remember but I wrote like at least 10 drafts of this like 15 minute film Mm-hmm. And from the beginning, you know, people would say like, girl, you're, you're being anal or like, is it that serious? Mm. Um, so people do that a lot. And um, my biggest regrets kind of in life, <laughs> but as an <laughs> artist, especially my first and a li- not as much in my second short, but a little bit in my second short is listening to, is not listening to myself and listening to someone go going oh, it's not that serious. It's fine. Mm. And me knowing in my heart, like, oh no, like I shouldn't have moved on. Um, because there's a difference between being anal and getting stuck and like sabotaging the film because you're stuck on one detail that you spent five hours on and now you're not going to finish it. Like I totally understand that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then there's a part of you like that's deeper than that. That's like that wasn't right, and I shouldn't have compromised on that. Okay. Um, and that 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 was like the biggest lesson for me. Like just be proud of your standard, mm-hmm. and know that people are going to question that all, all the time. Yeah. Like all the time. And uh, just being diplomatic about it. Obviously, you don't need to be like a dictator. But I think I did that a lot better than I did it in my first short. Um, there were things that I definitely let go because I was like, okay, I'm being a perfectionist. This is my anxiety. And then there were other aspects where I was, you know, where I did say, no, we need this. No, it's a requirement. Like this, this is, this is like a huge make it or break it situation here. Um, so I'm really glad I listened to most of my instincts, not all of them, but it really, I think it came out in the final product that, that attention to detail. A perfect example is when I decided to become the art director. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, well, <clears throat> this is what I have to do. And I was literally like, I think like the night before this, no, maybe like two nights before I spent like 12 hours, like I was also like the costume designer. So I spent like 12 hours working on that at least more, actually way more than that. And, and some of my friends did kind of look at me like I was crazy. They were just like, do you need to do this? Like, is it that serious? Like, it's a good script. Like, like you don't need to drive yourself crazy. And I was like, I just want it. I want to push myself to tell a story through color. Mm. Through what they're wearing is important. Um, I'm so happy I did that. It was a little, it felt, it felt a little manic. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I'm really glad that I like followed through with that vision. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm so happy to hear, hear that you went through that process because following your instinct your intuition, you know, it really gets you further than, than short, you know, shortchanging yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I had that experience too, with my, my last production where a lot, <laughs> a lot of feedback would happen of, oh, you don't have to do this or that or that or that. And, um, I was giving into it a lot in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And then towards the end, someone did tell me, you know, you're shortchanging yourself way too much. And, um, it does, you know, it does impact you as a person and like as a creative. And I imagine that for Risa too, it's like you talking about like the, um, you know, telling the story through color, um, had that not happened, I, I think it would have, uh, diminished the quality of the film because I, I did notice that, you know, the, the color, I mean, cause I'm a filmmaker. So I notice every little tiny detail, you know, I'm like, right. Oh, I see that. I see that. I see that, you know? So I did watch the film and I did, I did notice, um, you know, the patterns and the color and uh, the structure of that. And I think it really, it really made, made an impact on the story as well, you know, visually. Cause you do tell a story visually too. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I, I do, I did love that detail so much. So you yeah, know. and it and it definitely beats just telling actors to bring whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like and not dressing the set, being like whatever. There's a couch. We're just yeah. gonna talk and act in front of it. <laughs> it, it helps the actors too. It helps their performance as well. Cause, right, you know. and, and and also like you know a lot of times you know um, some I mean there was one actress that came on I think it was like the second or third day of 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 shooting and, and she didn't really know us. Mm-hmm. She, was, she auditioned and you know a lot of times as an actor when you come in for like a short film or something low budget you kind of just expect the worst you expect like disorganization she didn't even know what she was what she didn't know who any of us were yeah. so I'm sure she was prepared for the worst and just walking to like an organized set with like just like a costume rack and like attention to color and detail she was like oh this is like real oh so you're, you guys are actually really doing this um that also helps with everyone's psyche to not have like a producer and director who's like, eh. <laughs> yeah, it it really does. Like, yeah, just go go in the go in the bathroom and uh, just put on something nice and uh, do your own makeup and uh, let's go out and do some acting. Like, <laughs> I don't ever want to have that vibe. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it does make a huge huge difference. It raises the quality of like everything. Of right. everything. It really does. It really does. So Riso now is like it's an I see that's an it's an upcoming film festivals and and so on and so forth. 
are you planning anything else for the story are you gonna help it grow or shape it or are you gonna keep it as is i'm gonna keep it as is um i know sometimes people make short films because they have an idea for like a feature based off specifically that story Mm -hmm. i don't have that as much uh what i have is i i definitely want to make um longer form you know art um and I definitely want to incorporate Afro Latinx stories. Um, I want things to be, you know, just the fact that I'm from New York and I grew up in New York. And so my life has always been diversity. Mm-hmm. And the lead in my, the film of my life is not, you know, a Caucasian male. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, I want to just write compelling stories about the people who are main characters in my life. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, it is sort of related to Hriso, but it's not necessarily going to, I'm not necessarily going to write stories about like being an Afro Latina actress. Um, but to me, it's more like telling the story through our eyes, whatever story it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing more of your work. I am too. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, I, I, I yeah, I, I'm such a huge fan of like people who you know continue their journey in right. the direction of like purpose. You know, it's um, it's really interesting to see to see that. So yeah, I I mean, I, I wish you best of luck with Riso. I really hope it like wins more festivals because it's such a great story <laughs> yeah thank you you know and so, yeah um you know frank's always been telling me when he gets into a short film festival or a, fe- a festival I, recently it's in, it was in the burbank film festival right uh yeah well that well i know this is going to be aired into the future so yes let's speak in past tense but oh, okay. tech, but but yeah no uh, <laughs> it's 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 happening things starting tomorrow the Burbank um, International Film Festival but that will have been passed that would have you know um, so yeah so that's the next one in, oh, that's exciting in my present yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> well thank you Jeanette for for doing this interview with me I'm I'm really grateful and thank you for you know uh, inviting me yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, I'm really grateful to, to do this because it's always I, I love connecting with other, you know, other women and like hearing what they're doing. And um, you know, I, I think it's I think it's also really important for you know women to support other women um, right. during these times and in the future. Because I I was actually in my last interview I <laughs> I was interviewing a friend of mine who's a director who lives in India and like she was saying how. Um, you know, as women, like, we're taught that women don't like each other mm-hmm. and hate each other. And in her eyes, in her opinion, she said, uh, that's just a ploy for men to have us fall apart rather than stick together. Right. Absolutely. And, um, I kind of laughed at that because I was like, that's so true. But yeah, no, it, it is very important to, I, I think, I think, I think it's further awareness of like, you, know, you have to collaborate with other women. and really support Absolutely. Them. Yeah. You can't go through life, like, uh vilifying your own people (laughs) as a woman and because that makes you sort of be at the mercy of men Mm. accepting you and giving you a pass Mm -hmm. um and i ain't about that life Mm -mm, neither am i (laughs) yeah Thank you so much for listening to my conversation with Jeanette Delona Vriso. Don't forget to follow the Dark Brown channel for one last episode of season one of the Evershade podcast. 